everyone. We're going to have a program today entitled Real Time at Stoneham High. And my name is Nancy Arard. I'm a resident of Stoneham. And um, I have a program at Stoneham High with a health school, with the health classes that we have there. And what we talk about is organ donation. The uh, reason I do this is because my son was a student at Stoneham High, graduated in 1999, and um, unfortunately had a short life and a sudden death in 2005. Um, it's an amazing thing when something happens so sudden in your life that things change very quickly. And um, what I've found in the last few years, I have the opportunity to make his life um, a legacy of the gift that he gave to others. And um, what's happened is we've gone to Stoneham High, part of the health classes there. And today what I wanted to do was bring a couple of the students from Stoneham High here. And um, a speaking partner, I have Mike, who's a heart transplant recipient, and my daughter Emily as Bo's sister. So let me first introduce everyone here. Ryan is a student at Stoneham High, has heard us talk at the health classes. And Sarah is a sophomore at, Stone at Stoneham High. Mike, my friend here is a heart recipient, Mike, and my daughter Emily is Bo's sister. So today what we want to start with is um, the storyline. Um, the story is, is that um, Bo had a very difficult teenage years, a lot of struggles, a lot of uh, ADHD, um, a lot of help at Mass General. He came into Stoneham High in the middle of his junior year and um, made a lot of friends quickly, um, successfully graduated, um, became a plumber after that. But um, in 2005, when he was ready to leave my house, go out and have a life of his own, um, he was at a party and without any warning had an internal tear on his right carotid, which in a quarter of a second built up pressure and burst right through his brain. And in this party, when something happens like this, no one is sure what to do or what actually happened. And we, he was lucky to be with a friend who could resuscitate him at the scene. And he went to Saints Hospital in Lowell, then to Mass General in the morning. And um, I had the very difficult decision of what to do. Um, one of the things that most is important that we've discussed in the health classes is getting permission and knowing what you want to um, be your wishes to be granted in a situation like this and um, when we were going uh, to Stoneham High driving the car uh, I turned to my son and I said you know with all those problems you've had growing up um, someday you have to give back you've had more help than everyone else in town put together and someday you have to give back and he turned to me and he said don't worry ma someday I will. Um, and those words came back to me in this moment of peril to think about the gift of life, the ability of one person to help many people, and all the help he had gotten in Stoneham uh, to graduate as a student with his class and to uh, enter the world um, partially as an adult. So. Um, in the, la in the year after he passed away, um, I worked with New England Organ Bank with their logo Donate Life, and they've given us a chance to speak um, in hospitals and in schools and do these um, inspiring stories to change the minds of people that maybe haven't ever thought of this, this um, opportunity for life. So what I'd like to do is introduce my friend Mike, who's a heart recipient, because he was also at Mass General, and give him a chance to um, tell his story of uh, gratitude and of uh, receiving a heart. Mike. Thank you. Two years, 10 months, and three weeks ago, on May 29, 2007, my wife and I were about to celebrate our 31st wedding anniversary at the Mass General Cardiac Intensive Care Unit. Mm -hmm. uh, a doctor came in and mentioned that he had a heart available. And the following morning, I received a new heart. My donor's name is Joshua Bent, and he also donated his other eight organs 
to other recipients and save their lives. And countless other people, their, 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 their lives were also enhanced with this tissue. My problem started back in 1965 when I was 14 years old. I used to complain to my mother about being dizzy. And I had my heart tested and uh, they found that I had a rare heart condition. And doctors told me back then if I did strenuous exercise, there was always the possibility of sudden death. And that my only cure was a heart transplant, and the first heart transplant wasn't performed until two years later in 1967. Also in 1967, my mother passed away suddenly at, at 45. And so it was kind of tough dealing with those two events, but I decided that in order to live a longer life, I would continually have to remind myself of my physical limitations. Over the next 42 years, I had to deal with all these medical problems, such as uh, shortness of breath, dizziness, and palpitations. And I also had many difficult complications, which thanks to the advances in cardiac care, in medicine, and especially the Mass General, it got me through till the time I needed a transplant. I needed uh, an AICD device implant. I had five over the years, from 1990 to 2007. They, they eventually saved my life uh, twice. Wow. And I also had uh, cholesterol problems where I needed my arteries opened up and I needed five cardiac stents. Uh, I also had uh, a interest, inoperable intracerebral hemorrhage six months before my transplant. And, uh, and through the grace of God, uh, I finally got in, and after two misses, I, I received my heart. Wow. And uh, it's just been wonderful. Uh, I'm able to exercise now, which I haven't been, ever be, been able to do. I can work out for two hours without getting short of breath. And uh, from two days out of surgery, I, I knew I had to meet my donor family. So we corresponded back and forth, and finally we met face to face, and uh, it was just an unbelievable event. Uh, meeting, we walked into the room, and uh, Josh's mother came up to me and put her hand on my chest to feel our son's heart, mm. and it was just unbelievable. He, they, they showed us pictures of him in uh, grandma school, in high school, and uh, his graduation pictures from uh, Wentworth University, and. Uh, and it's just developed into where we're, we're, we're good friends. And uh, Josh was quite the person. He was uh, very charismatic and passionate about everything that he did. And, uh, and uh, it's... What, what happened to end his life so early? What happened with him? He got into a car accident oh. right out on Store Drive. Oh. It was uh, quite tragic. But, uh, but right close to Mass General, yes. too. Yes, yes. Wow. And with Bo, um, it was also at Mass General, but we had um, a day after his um, sudden brain injury, we had a whole day to decide what to do, and his friends from Stoneham all came to the hospital. And it's ironic now that I look back that that whole day which we were deciding what to do was the day they were doing the testing and gave us a chance to say goodbye and a chance to um, kind of realize the moment and come together because it's not only one person's decision, it's decision of the whole family. And um, in the case of Bo also, um, he had talked a little bit about if something ever happened that that's what he would, he wouldn't want to be um, uh, kept alive artificially. But um, we, we were able to um, take time and, and uh, be with him and um, make a ceremony that seemed most appropriate for us. And we actually um, played the Beatles' White Album in the OR and went down with him and sat, stood with him um, to try to make the best of those moments and think of the life that would be given to other people were, were, that we could make this decision. It was really a, um, it's a traumatic thing, but we realized people would, um, the two people were called for his kidneys um, while those decisions were being made. and and. Um, the specific thing about Bo's situation is that by having that time, people could be called and ready in the OR prepared and ready to receive his organs um, as soon as, as we um, 
as his heart stopped. So in the case of Josh, it was he had a his he his brain was not functioning, and he could. They brought him in to donate organs, but with the case of Bo, it had to be that we agreed to remove his oxygen and do this, what's called donation after cardiac death, that we did this as a choice in the hospital, and it's become uh, one of the more controversial parts of donation is um, you, you make this decision with the person's um, wishes in your heart that you know that they would want to do this, but it really brings, again, the, the idea of asking your family about this, and that brings back why we do this at Stoneham High, is to talk to the kids that are getting their license and kids in the beginning of their life, because truly um, donation and being a recipient will be part of the future of medicine. So I want to introduce the students again today and say that, that we want to have some discussion as we go into the classroom and tell Bo's story, Mike and I speak together and talk about donation versus being a recipient. But I want to bring in both uh, Ryan and Sarah because they've heard our, our talk and we want to bring some thoughts about what that, what those, um, the subject and what their thoughts about it are and, and uh, if they've talked to their parents. Well, I think, I think one of the most wonderful things about donation is that you're giving part of your life Right. You know, to another person. And it's just, that's one of the most beautiful things is that you're you're keeping that chain of life. And you're <clears throat> you're extending, you know, someone else's. You know, maybe your life is ending, but then there's this other person whose life could be ending. But then you give you give that force to them, and it's just it's a beautiful thing. And it, you know, it's it kind of I think it brings people together. You know, it has that kind of makes us all remember that we're all the same animal. We're all you know humans, and we're all got that. Brotherhood and, and that, life is that, a gift, yeah, an yeah. uncertain gift. It's an, yeah, it's uncertain, an uncertain gift. gift that we all share, and it's just I think that's one of the most wonderful things about it. So that's why I, that's what I take out of and donating for life. And everything. Sarah, um, when when you heard our talk, you wrote a very nice letter back about your struggles with asthma and struggles, and just understanding how it is, as Mike was saying, how it is to live and struggle, and say, you know, how can I? What's my future? How can I be better? And and understand what his story was of having to wait and wait and hope that he would be better. I was always an asthmatic. Well, I actually got in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And I do track, and I'm a big sports person. And it's just pretty much like holding on. I can relate to you because I have shortness of breath as you, but it's always like not giving up and going for it and knowing you can do it. So, but that's Very nice. important. Yeah. And there was a student at Stoneham High too. That um, do you yes. remember her, Ryan? Yeah, uh, yeah. Kelly Conlon. She. Um, I was in third grade when I found out about all. She had gotten, I think it was two lung transplants. And I remember in third grade we had a fundraiser for her. But she was, she passed away, uh, her senior year. And um, yeah, she she had cystic fibrosis, and she was very sick and it was you know she got two transplants two you know lung two lung transplants and she was just very fortunate to have lived as long as she she did she's very you know she's very sick and you know their family I am very familiar with them they're very they're you know they're they're wonderful people and they had to make those tough decisions all the time you know when if they wanted Kelly to keep going with the way she was living and they you know they they made the brave and the good choice Every time, and it was just, you know, and, and Kelly was very brave, and you know, went through a lot through her life. But yeah. you know, it just goes to show you that, you know, you're giving that person just, you know, two, you know, she got two transplants, she's a very young person, but she was able to live, and was able to, you know, live past the age where she wouldn't have been able to experience any of life. She got to experience life. I know she went to, I think she went to a prom. You know, she went, she got to be right. normal for her. You know. And, and you know, really, truly, um, receiving an organ or tissue, or um, because you could receive corneas or tissue, but especially with an organ, it's life enhancing. It it doesn't yeah. mean that um, you know several people that have. Um, a, I know a woman who has a lung transplant that then needed a kidney transplant because of all the medications you right, take. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of the rejection problems. You have. Um,